Reporting on the games you love by people who love to game. The MMO Reporter Network. Listening to Guild Wars Reporter on the MMO Reporter Network, brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at audibletrial.com slash MMO Reporter. And by Doghouse Systems. Choose your weapon at doghousesystems.com. And welcome to another episode of Guild Wars Reporter. This is episode 148. I am Celeste, and as always, I am joined by the alluring Alona. Hello, exalted Celeste. Oh. I can't take credit for that one. Oh, okay. Jawas suggested it, and I'm like, ooh, that is totally good. I love it. I feel very important now. <laughs> <laughs> Although uh, I should pretend like I don't recognize you because you weren't here last week. Well, life. Things happened. Yep. You were missed. I mean, I had a good time chatting with Hunter, but the whole editing part and setting up the show and recording it properly. (laughs) Apparently it's beyond my capabilities. It's hard. I won't lie. (laughs) So yay you. Yes. Yay me. So how are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? Pretty good. That's good. (laughs) Did you want to know what I did this week? Yeah, I just thought I'd go ahead and check in first. Oh, okay. (laughs) We can do business. We actually haven't chatted that much lately. Yeah, I know. I've been like ships in the night. I'm staring off into space and nodding sagely. (laughs) (laughs) That always translates well to an audio (laughs) podcast, yes. Mm. (laughs) So anyway, this past week... Mm -hmm. I actually didn't do an, like I said earlier in the pre-show, I was doing taxes and it, they were a thorn, a mm-hmm. thorn in my side and not a heart of, they were just terrible. So this week though, I did Fungions and Fractals on Saturday with Mock. We did one Fungion, which was Ascalon Catacombs. Can't remember the path. It wasn't one I had done an awful lot. And for the fractals, we got two or three that we had hardly ever got ever, and M in the guild had never done them at all. Mm. But also joining us from the guild was Artful, who had never done fractals at all and had only ever done one dungeon. So we were probably on our best behavior for that. Cool. Oh, yeah. And Blaze was with us. He was saying uh, path three is what we did. I'm trying to decide if I should out M or not. <laughs> because we we got the fractal with my trin. Mm-hmm. So, you know, where Horror releases all the bombs, the field of, you know, all the red reticles on the ground. Yeah. That you have to avoid. And she hates this part. We've only had this once, maybe twice before with her. And so she keeps dying. We wiped several times. So it's not just her by any means. But after about the third or fourth wipe... I think it was Irish Dog actually suggested. So go into your settings and do you have the indicators for area of effect stuff or whatever it's called unchecked? <laughs> she goes, yes, I do. <laughs> so she had been trying to do this room without any indicators. <laughs> oh my God. Which is no wonder why. <laughs> so this is almost on par, I think, with the white bow incident, but not not quite as bad. She was like, I, I kind of, everyone's saying, just avoid the red circles. And we're like, I don't see any red circles. And we're like, how can you not see the red circles? They're everywhere. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and when you see the red, just step out of it. You don't have to run very far. You know, try to find a negative space and walk into it. 
if you run too much, you know, you get more of the red circles around you and it could be bad. And we did much better after those were turned back on, though. My goodness. Yeah. That was, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. The white bow incident was when we did an entire dungeon and it was taking slightly longer than it probably should have. And it turns out that after the end of it, M discovers that she swapped out for, I think it was her thief, so short bow. And she thought she was equipping her exotic, <laughs> except she equipped a random drop she had got. <laughs> so it was white without any like bonuses or anything. Yep. Or anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I think I've almost done that a few times, so she's not alone there. <laughs> that was the white bow incident, <laughs> which Hunter still talks about. And he was actually tweeting about the red circle indicator thing for like two days afterwards. Mm-hmm. He goes, I'm still blown away about that. <laughs> Goodness. I did four Guild Wars 1 missions with Blaze slash Irish Dog. And he was very patient. He knew those uh, missions like the back of his hand. So I did actually do the, because I said the previous week that I'd done the Ruins of Sermia, but I never got the little um, triangular thing Oh, when I did that one. So I still, I still have to do one more. I'm hoping I can get it done tonight before it goes away. Hmm. Okay. Because I went away. I did some PvP. I haven't done any more roaming since uh that one attempt Mm -hmm. on the friday and uh last night actually i was just tooling around a little bit i had a lot of fun yesterday chatting and speculating with hunter about the other possible elites specializations anyway so that's all i did but it was a lot of fun speculating i did the crazy parts of it the crazy parts of it i tend to speculate crazy that's true I mean, not as crazy as M, but pretty crazy. (laughs) (laughs) Well, all right. What did you do this week? I completed a Decade Weapon and the Balthazar Weapon for my Elementalist in Guild Wars 1. Mm -hmm. And she looks pretty awesome with it. Yes, I saw the picture you posted to Twitter. That uh, wand looks amazing. I know, I really, I've liked that sword skin for a long time. So I'm kind of glad to see it as a wand. Uh, it's really a unique thing that happened with the Decade Weapons, that they allowed it to be, like, weapon swap-ish. I mean, there's no lockdown in Guild Wars 1. You can use whatever weapon you want, but the bonuses are not going to be as good. Yeah, they're very much more tied to your profession. Anyone can use a staff, but if the stats on it are domination, you're not going to put it on an elementalist. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So it was really nice to be able to throw something on that was actually stat-oriented towards the Elementalist, but looked fierce, I guess I want to say. Fierce. (laughs) I was in the Silver Waist and Dry Top for a long time. But you made tons of cash. I made probably 30 gold, yeah. See, that's tons of cash, especially considering you're trying to uh, reconstitute your funds. Yeah. I made a fair amount of money, and I sold quite a few things, traded in, and I got a whole bunch of the Carapace gear boxes, and I was working on stuff for Madri, so I got, like, the clay pot done and all that kind of stuff, and, you know, just kind of catching up and working as I'm going along. But I still haven't gotten a portal, and I don't think I'm gonna, so that's kind of poopy. (laughs) I've been in Silver Waste once. And it was just to uh, consume my piles of silky sand. Mm. And then I left. <laughs> that was all I did there. All right, then. Mm. I spent most of my money already, though. Uh, apparently, my ranger had berserker armor, but not the runes that go along with that. <laughs> like, I had, like, one out of six on all of the runes. Like, they were all just mishmashed. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I never noticed. This is like your white bow incident. (laughs) Well, I mean, it's not that bad. I mean, the first stat, at least, was something that I was wanting. So it's not terrible, but... It's white bow-esque. It is. So I decided to go ahead and and buy runes and having to redo that on my Guardian because I got the cheapest gear possible in my Guardian. And now I'm seeing, nope, I need something a little bit better than that. So what uh, runes did you put into it? 
I ended up getting a Rune of the Ranger, hmm. which isn't bad, but it's like a gold each. That is? So, well. I mean, it's a chunk of change. And then I've also been working on Madri, so I've bought like a couple of things just to avoid having to do the time gate. So I'm at Mysterious Seedling now. Ah. Uh, don't do what I did when uh, I was doing Madri and get beyond a certain point forgetting that I uh, had done so and <laughs> and contact Arena Net support. <laughs> <laughs> and then have to have them tell me, uh, you've already used that? <laughs> like, oh. No, I made it out of order. I had plates of plant food and I turned them into the wrong platter, I guess is what it is. Like you take the different food, plant foods, and you turn it into, oh, mm-hmm. turn it into a plate of food. Like yeah. specific food. Well, I went ahead and made the ascended one first because <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. Apparently, actually, I think I did that too. So, I mean, that doesn't explain my other confusion, but I totally did that too. So that's cool. Yeah, I'd be further along if I hadn't done that, but I'm okay with it. I'm, I'm working on it slowly, and I'm trying not to buy too many of the stuff because. But you're going to be further ahead when you get to that portion. Yeah, but for now, I'm waiting time gating yeah not consuming all of the dust i have is what the problem is oh (laughs) wish i could give it to you yeah that'd be nice i've been kind of messing around with my professions and it seems kind of silly to be doing it now before all of the trait changes and everything else that's going to be happening Mm -hmm. but i've decided that i was going to go ahead and work on trying to get better at my professions and i know that sounds kind of weird because it's like i've gotten them to 80 i'm probably pretty decent at it well the answer is no apparently i'm not because when i started my ranger i pretty much was like longbow and then sword axe and that's what i did from like level 20 to 80 Mm -hmm. now i'm going back and like changing out different weapons and trying new things and it's very different, and it's kind of like playing a whole new character, to be perfectly honest. It's kind of like, oh god, what am I doing? You know, I actually, uh, even going back to, like, Alona being my main character and the first one I leveled to 80, I didn't switch up her weapons all that much on the journey, and it wasn't until once I was at 80 and had everything unlocked, Mm -hmm. as far as utility skills and all that, that maybe it was slightly before 80, like whenever you have access to everything. I don't know. I think I play the same way. And you just kind of, you, you're in your leveling groove. All right, now I'm at the max. What else can I do? I mean, I would have tried them a little bit, but I'm still learning things. I'm realizing that a lot. I was trying to roam on my guardian. So I picked up a, a roaming build and I, it was nothing that I was used to. So I switched over to it and I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I'm trying out Scepter Torch, and it's very different from, like, Staff Guardian. Yeah. So I'm having a really fun time with it, though. I think that's what I was. I said last week on the show, that now that I actually have a Guardian, that I'm playing beyond being a Key Farmer, which was Staff only. I'm getting to experience some of the other options that they had. Mm-hmm. So I totally know what you mean. It's like, yay! <laughs> And I also was in World vs. World with a uh, tough love critic, and I did a whole lot of solo roaming, which we'll talk about in Surviving the Mist, but yeah. I'll talk about that experience down there, because no. <laughs> because it fits there. Because that's where it's supposed to go. Yeah. So let's go ahead and talk about when we live stream. We live stream on Wednesdays at 9.30 p.m. EDT, 6.30 p.m. PDT at twitch.tv slash Reporter. You can subscribe to the audio version of the podcast on iTunes and Stitcher and remember to rate and review us so that people know that we're a real podcast and exist and can speak real English words despite the evidence that it seems <laughs> as though we cannot. I love how you always kind of blubble up on that exact part. <laughs> we actually did get a review this week. Mm-hmm. And I actually believe the pen penner, the writer of this review, is in chat. I thought I saw their name. We got a review from iTunes, five stars, funny and informative, from Bigfoot55 from the U.S. 
Celeste and Alona give great tips and talk about the latest news in the Guild Wars 2 community. The podcast is well organized and they talk about all aspects of the game. It is best to listen live. What do you get in return? You get to hear your review read by us with commentary on Mm -hmm. a live show. In sultry tones or something. Not necessarily. (laughs) (laughs) Special thanks to Martin for being generous and contributing to our Patreon campaign. We truly appreciate your support. Report from Lion's Arch. We actually got news about the Chronomancer. And by news, I mean the points of interest on Friday. It was very awesome to see it in action, the Chronomancer. I'm pretty excited about it. I still need to get in. I can't wait to... Even reading everything, it's one of those, I need to get in there and try it so I know exactly. We'll have the link to Delphi's. They're always really well done. And Celeste wrote down everything that she could think of on this and she did a good job so i'm just gonna read that (laughs) okay so joe kim's kimis did the 10th anniversary stuff for guild wars one and i did not realize that a kimis existed and as in kimis the historian that is in the eye of the north yeah i had no idea i love this stuff i love that they do that that they name things after people it is pretty awesome and thank you to him for doing that, because mm-hmm. I, it was really fun. I actually would like it if it stuck around, to be perfectly honest. Just as something you could work on whenever. I'm not saying that for selfish reasons, <laughs> but I'm totally saying it for selfish reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Chronomancers were originally going to be part of a cancelled Utopia project. We We talked about that briefly last week, I think, but... They were originally apparently supposed to be constructs, so not humans, which actually that had never even occurred to me before that all characters in Guild Wars 1, all player characters were humans. There were no other races. And so for them to bring in a construct is another race. Yeah. That had never even occurred to me for some reason. I was like, they're right. You had said here that the concept art reminded you of the Zodiac armor. Yeah, I don't know why, but I guess it was the cutaways from No, the... it totally does. I completely see it. Reminds me a lot of the Zodiac armor and the way that it's shaped even kind of fits mm-hmm. that way. It's kind of like, oh, all right, that's cool. I can handle that. Mm-hmm. All of the um, mantra skills from Guild Wars 1 <laughs> were being used as the <laughs> skill bar icons for the Chronomancer skills, which I thought was pretty fun. That, you know, they don't have any artwork for it yet, so they just kind of threw in the Guild Wars 1 skills. <laughs> but they worked pretty good, actually, I thought. It was like, oh, nice. Yeah, it's nostalgic. Yep, they talked about Alacrity, which is the new off not a boon, and there are some traits that will change it as well, and it's a buff that will give you or your allies are affected with it. 66% increase in speed recharge for your skills, which plays towards kind of like the fast casting that Mesmer had in Guild Wars 1. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. The Chronomancer is getting wells, which actually makes me wonder how many other professions are getting things that were exclusively theirs. Maybe other professions are going to start getting some of those things as well. Oh, definitely. Hmm. One of the wells is the Well of Action. It slows enemies and then transfers that time as quickness to you and your allies. So quickness or alacrity. It says that it would transfer as quickness, I believe. All right. You can gain alacrity every time you shatter. If you... Is that a passive one or is that a... I think that was if you use the F5 shatter. Ah, right. It says alacrity every time you shatter, though. So you get offhand shield. Mm Mm-hmm. One of the weapon skills is, it's like I've never played the game before. (laughs) It's called Echo of Memory, and it's a block stance, but you can still use it while moving, which is nice, Mm because sometimes you got to keep moving. It blocks the next attack against you, and when it does that, it creates a phantasm, 
called Illusionary Chronomancer, which will throw its shield like Captain America and bounces between allies and enemies. If it hits an ally, you or they will gain alacrity. If it hits an enemy, they will be slowed. And this makes me really sad, extra sad, that it looks like Illusionary Elasticity is going away from the traits. Mm. Because that gave you an extra bouncing attack. Uh. I really liked that one. And as far as I can see, it's not there. Unless they've moved it into the Chronomancer line, which we haven't seen yet. It's possible. It's possible. I'm kind of hoping that that's what happens. Carbon Based is saying that Alacrity on Shatter is a minor trait that all Chronomancers will have since they have to pick the Chronomancer trait line. And it's on any Shatter, so not just F5. Woo! That's what I thought, but it's been a while since I saw the uh, points of interest, so I couldn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I listened to it while I was at work. <laughs> so. Yeah, distractedness. Yeah. If you block using the Echo of Memory, you'll be able to use another sh- shield skill, Deja Vu, which repeats Echo's skill. So it's kind of like cast, Deja Vu, cast, but you only get to do it twice, I think is what they said. Yeah. And then when the field that's created by this skill, like, because it's like a wave that goes out to the enemy and then comes back. Mm -hmm. When the wave comes back to you, it actually shaves off 10 seconds of recharge for this skill, too. So normally it's 40 seconds. And then if you manage to catch it on its way back, it goes down to 30 seconds. I thought Echo was Tides of Time is the wave that goes out. Tides of Time. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Am I going insane? No. No, Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so yeah, the Echo of Memory block the next incoming attack when this skill ends, summon a phantasm that slows enemies and grants alacrity to allies. If an attack is blocked, Deja Vu is usable for a short time. And Deja Vu block the next incoming attack when the skill ends, summon a phantasm that slows enemies and grants alacrity. So that's actually really good for phantasm generation, mm-hmm. if you time it right. And then Tides of Time is the one you were talking about, where you launch a wave of temporal energy that damages and stops enemies it passes through and buffs allies the wave then returns to you touching the returning wave reduces the recharge of this skill i like that it's pretty cool looking Mm-hmm. they have tool tips on um, delphi but everything's kind of a work in progress so recharge time and cast time are all kind of i think up in the air still yeah it's all still being tweaked quite a bit i'm sure <gasps> Carbon Base is saying, use Tides, blink to other side after it stuns a second time, F5 for recharge, repeat, equals six stuns in short order. Yikes. If you could pull it off, that'd be pretty damn cool. Yeah. And now I want to. Unless they make it that that will never be possible. <laughs> <laughs> One of the Grandmaster traits that they mentioned was Chrono Phantasma. Mm-hmm. That may or may not be the correct name. It was kind of hard to hear him properly. Yeah, that's what it was. When you shatter phantasms, it resummons the phantasm immediately, but it only does it like one time. So it's like, summon a phantasm, shatter, but it's still there. And then when you shatter again, it'll be gone. Yeah, and they look slightly different. Like they have extra butterflies. (laughs) Extra butterflies. Because he has mesmers now with more butterflies. And I think it's butterflies anyway. And then it's like the butterflies are what explode or shatter. Mm -hmm. And while leaving the... uh, Phantasm still there. It was just Chrono Phantasm, by the way. Oh, my bad. You made it sound like uh, Spanish or something. I made it more elegant. Yes. More exalted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As you do. As I do. Yes. Illusionary reversion is you shatter clones and have a clone spawn on your location. Is that a utility skill? Or is that a. I think it was a trait. It is a trait. Similar to the trait for clones, when you shatter clones, it will resummon a new clone, and you can have it along with Chrono Phantasm. So, mm, fantastic. Hmm. There is. They did clarify that all of the wells were uh, like three seconds, so it's three pulses, and that the damage or changes that happen with it will be based on the number of pulses you're able to get off on that particular enemy. Yep. So if they stay in the well for only two you're not going to get as good a result as if they were there for three. But this is where lockdown can really come in handy. Mm -hmm. Well, with Tides of Time, because that stuns and stops enemies. Yeah, it's going to be pretty crazy. And then Well of Gravity is 
an elite? Elite gravity well. And yeah, it like sucks the enemies into a gravity well. And <laughs> it was really funny to go back and look at it after Robert G had mentioned it, saying that when they're sucked in on like the last pulse, they get mm -hmm. like flipped over like they're floating. <laughs> so yes. you can see the oh, I forgot the name of the enemy. The thing that was shooting spines out at it. Oh, I just watched it before coming up here. I don't remember the name of it, but it was funny to see it like go floop. <laughs> like upside down with its back in the ground because <laughs> it didn't flip all the way so yeah and they, they'll also have also like a well of eternity which is more the healing types well so it was well of action well of recall well of calamity well gravity well and well of eternity so hunter is calling it a bulbasaur i'm down with that yeah so there's a lot going on with Chronomancer, and I feel mm -hmm. like there is no way I am ever going to master <laughs> that specialization. Well, a part of me is trying to decide, and I think I saw a few things on, was it an article I read? Now I can't remember where it was, and I apologize to whomever wrote it or wherever I saw it. That there was speculation of, is anyone going to want to play non-Chronomancer? Yeah. And if that's going to be the case for other uh, elite specializations as well. Is everyone just, once you reach a certain level and can be it, are you only ever going to run that? But I'm, I'm, it's curious. Like, I, surely the whole point of the Chronomancer is that its cooldowns are going to be long enough that it, I don't know. I was going to say it needs to be a little bit more tricky to manage or something. Otherwise, everyone is just going to play that no matter what, but maybe not. I think it's going to be really tricky to manage. I think it's going to be very difficult to play as a specialization and be successful. The thing is, it's so closely tied to the weapon that you're not going to take Chronomancer and not use shield. Mm -hmm. If you really don't care for the play style of the shield, then maybe you're just not going to play Chronomancer. We'll see. So on to, it was a theory that was just posted in chat room earlier before we started the show, and we liked it so much we just plopped it into the middle of the show. Mm -hmm. From Rune Lockhart, and their theory is, each of the Biconics will learn a new profession from a corresponding influence. For example, Brom learns the longbow from spending time with his mother. Timey spends time with the torch guy to learn metallurgy. Connick teaches the mesmer he's bound to the shield. Rox learns the staff from druids and Brahm, etc. That was... I like it. I like that theory a lot. And mm -hmm. I think Rune definitely hits it on the head. That, that's pretty close to what's happened. Mm -hmm. Well, that, well, we don't know, really, do we? Well, I mean, I don't know. It, it fits. Oh, so the one speculation that I was having with Hunter about the other professions was I was wondering if, and I'm, other people may have already said this and it, so it might be not new news for anyone, but I was thinking for Revenant that it would be Ritualist. Has that been, has that been tossed around already? As a name? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm apparently not in the loop <laughs> of the gossip. See, for now we can go ahead and say, because it's Wednesday right now. Mm-hmm that I think the Guardians is going to be Paragon. I think, yeah, I think it's going to be Paragon. I think most people think that. Yeah. So sounds... hopefully it's true. Yeah, if you keep listening to the episode, you may find out what the actual name is. <laughs> because? Because we're going to be recording a supplemental later on tomorrow mm -hmm. that talks about that reveal that will hopefully be happening tomorrow. So if it happens tomorrow, it'll we'll do the supplemental tomorrow. If it doesn't happen then we're just gonna cut this out and no one's gonna hear about it pretty much yeah <laughs> and we have tomorrow night off <laughs> essentially yeah so you know it's now thursday so you guys know <laughs> and the dragon hunter has been revealed which is the elite specialization for guardians and it's a name it's uh not what people were expecting i'll say that I don't think anyone was expecting that. Yeah, it's, um, I don't know. Somebody had said on Twitter, and I don't remember who, I think it was Hunter, actually, who said it sounds like it's a name for, like, 12-year-old boys. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that kind of sounds like what I would name it if I were a 12-year-old boy. I'm a dwagon hunter. Yeah, well, it's like Cal has his engineers. Wed dwagon. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Actually, I think it must have been 100 because he said that in Guild Chat earlier tonight. Yeah. Tonight still being Thursday through the magic of editing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this is the ferocious big game hunter. Basically what's happened is that you're a guardian, but now you have traps and a longbow. Yep. And your virtues have changed. Yep. The virtues have become corporeal in which, and they, they went in the article and explained them. And I'm sure they'll explain a lot more on Friday's ready up, which we're not waiting till Friday to do this. So yeah, the virtue of justice becomes basically, it sounds like it's spear of justice. Virtue of justice is now a thrown spear, which sounds very Paracon. Like I got to say mm-hmm. that burns foes and tethers them in place and wings of resolve virtue of resolve now grows wings of light and you can leap into an area to heal allies if you trait for it you can deliver an attack when you land and they don't really go into detail what that attack is in in the uh, blog post shield of courage the virtue of courage now creates a shield in front of you that blocks attacks for in range allies as well as yourself Mm-hmm. And you'll only be exposed on the flanks. And it, I can't remember here, does it say it in the article? It sounds like it moves with you as well. It's like a, a semicircle or like a 30 degree arc in front of you? I don't know if we really saw that in the video that they posted. No. Yeah. It says you're only- Yeah, with excellent control through positioning, you'll find that you can block much more efficiently when facing the enemy. I don't get the impression it's a semicircle, but... Well, I said you're only going to be exposed on the flank, and that yeah. makes me think, like, the back 60 degrees. Yeah, maybe. You know? That's very much possible. Almost all of those sound very Paragon-like. However, I can see why they wouldn't have called the profession Paragon when you consider the next one, which is... Traps! Light-based magical traps designed for big game, to be precise, with the elite being called Dragon's Maw. And even the Dragon Hunter's Heal is going to be a trap. I presume it's also going to be light based, which Mm. to me, I'm wondering if that's going to be light fields or ethereal fields, probably light fields, probably light. Yeah. For combos. So calling them light based, that seems to be pretty specific for that. They did say that specializing into dragon hunter gives a guardian much better access to conditions. Hmm. There's an elite trait called Rending Light, which will enable traps to also cause bleed. Again, building on those conditions. And I think there's like the Spear of Justice burns foes and burning is going to be stacking now. And there's just a bunch going on there. They did talk a fair bit. Well, not a fair bit. Nothing was really a fair bit. It was quite a quite a brief um, article. To echo what some other people had said in the community was that it kind of feels like they don't really know what they're doing with it yet. I mean, they've announced it and it's solid, like this is going to be happening, but it feels kind of half-baked. It might be one of those, it needs to be shown rather than described. I felt very similar to that when I was looking at the Chronomancer until I saw it. And then I was like, okay, I'm solid on this. And, And maybe that's, I mean... Just because uh, this article was written by Carl McLean, perhaps writing about these things is not necessarily his strong suit. Possible. And he's going to be amazing at showing it off. We don't know. and But they did, back to what I was saying before, they did talk a bit about the longbow. And it's instead of shooting arrows, the Guardian will focus on firing massive single projectiles at a ferocious ph- velocity. There's that ferocious again. Mm-hmm. I guess that explains why the core ranger baseline is going to include the range increase. Yes, that could be. Oh, that reminds me that I kept meaning to talk about when we were talking about uh, Chronomancer. Sorry for segueing. No worries. When they were talking about them getting wells and the Chronomancer wells specifically needed to be targeted to be useful. Mm -hmm. I believe that's why Necromancer wells are becoming targeted by default. Well, that and to clean it up, because having a trait just for that one thing seems really uh, unnecessary. I didn't mind it because actually I, on my necro, I use wells and I specifically don't target them because I want to take advantage of being in the middle of them. Oh. But, and, and that's neither here nor there. I'm like not upset that they're changing it. However, 
I was thinking that by their nature for the chronomancer, they need to be targeted. And if they weren't targeted by default for the necromancer, there'd be a bit of an outcry. So Mm -hmm. I think this is what we're talking about with with, uh, the dragon hunter is very similar to what I'm thinking with the range. Right. And ranger. Something similar happened there, which is why the necro is getting that, what most people would consider a benefit, but I don't think, there are probably some that don't. See, the ranger's traps are not being default ground targeted. But we do we know whether they are ground targeted here, the traps? No, we don't. So I guess that's kind of a moot point. I don't see any indication other than do they show a trap in the video, which I cannot recall off the top of my head if they did or not. See, I can't tell if the, the spiky thing that he shoots is from the longbow skill or if that's supposed to be a trap. Yeah. Like we, the immobilizing thing. We will find. I actually kind of wish there were annotations to show what was being shown. That would be really great if they would annotate it and say, okay, this is the skill. I love how they've done these. Like they did the profession ones like this when the game launched or before the game launched. And I liked it then. Also, the, I kind of like that bow. With the dragon face on it? Yeah. And belly. The dragon belly. <laughs> That's really all we know until tomorrow? Pretty much. And by tomorrow, I mean Friday. Okay. Which is the day that you'll be listening to this if you listen to the show on release. <laughs> but, you know. Full disclosure, and I'm sure I've mentioned this before, but I don't play Guardian an awful lot, it, if at all. Um, it's the last profession I've ever made a character in. So... A lot of this is, like, I've never really used any virtues overly much, so I don't necessarily, (laughs) I don't really know. (laughs) I played a Staff Guardian, which is basically just one and win. One and win. (laughs) Step three, profit. (laughs) Pretty much. There's only one step, press Mm. one. (laughs) And, you know, that's pretty much it. I missed one point here. They said we'd like each new virtue to retain properties of the traits that affect them, such as renewed justice and justice is blind. When not recharging, they'll still have passive effects, so you can continue to provide battle presence and provide your allies with a full health pool as you currently do. Which is really nice. You're not it's more additive rather than subtractive to the overall experience of being a guardian. Mm-hmm. I think is probably what they're trying to do across the board with the elite specializations. It would appear that way, yeah. Yeah. So if, um, you know, we'll see what happens during the live stream and Mm -hmm. probably talk about it again next week. Yep. With more knowledge, maybe. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) So let's go ahead and talk about stuff that's in the gem store. There is an elegant fan focus, Mm -hmm. which looks pretty cool. It does. For, For 600 gems. And then there is the Daydreamer's finery outfit for 700 gems have you seen much of the daydreamers finery outfit on other i've not seen it on other players in game i'll say that i looked at it on all of my characters and i was like i really like it (laughs) i love i love the peekaboo top on the guys oh yeah (laughs) it looks pretty awesome on my uh cutie pie (laughs) bitter (laughs) malt i quite like it i'm hoping to pick it up at some point. Actually, and I didn't even know it was in there. And I think it was, maybe it was Sunday. I was going, just going through the wardrobe. Mm-hmm. Or not wardrobe, through outfits. And I was just kind of clicking through the ones that I don't have yet. And I was like, clicked on one, just, you know, I was just not even reading them, just clicking on one, one after the other. And, oh no, it was after Fungens. Ah. And it was like this one that doesn't look, I'm like, what the heck is this? This is Daydreamer's Finery. Where is this? It's not even in the gem store. <laughs> so, but it was already in the preview panel. Ah. So. That'll do it. <laughs> underpack. <laughs> there is an interim specialization calculator made by that shaman over at Delphi.net. And it's it's got all the professions. It has what we know the specializations are going to be. I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, they've removed all like times and cast times and cooldowns. So it's just you can poke around and kind of theory craft a little bit prior to this change coming through. And this is totally what I use to double check whether illusionary elasticity was still a trait or not. 
Oh, okay. Because I'm like, wow, that would be great with illusionary elasticity. Wait a minute. Is it even still around? Check. No. That was sad. Well, I look forward to theory crafting like crazy until the patch is, you know, put in place properly. But uh, for the moment, I'm just kind of looking at it like, oh my god, I gotta learn all this stuff. Yeah, it's things are new, things are taken out, things are moved around. It's just like cats and dogs living together. It's all over the place. <laughs> all bets are off. <laughs> yep. And all of the traits are subject to change. Yes. So. Yeah, but it is still fun to play with. And it is actually nice to see how quick it can be to click through for new builds. And I've heard other people say this too. Like you can see builds more as like patterns. Mm -hmm. So you go, I know this was like up, down, middle, or middle, 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 or all up. You know, you can just see the patterns yeah. for them. So Spirit Sing is asking whether it's because illusionary elasticity is becoming baseline. It, I checked the baseline ones and I didn't see it there at all. Because I wondered that too, and I'm like, I don't see it anywhere. Surviving the Mists. Hello everybody, welcome to Surviving the Mists, the segment in which we discuss key issues, strategies, and the awesomeness of World v. World and PvP. Whether you're a veteran or a rookie, there is always something valuable discussed for you here. This week we're going to be going over build basics. Now, there are many aspects of any build. What you wear, the weapons you use, the trait points you invest, and the traits that you equip all need to synergize to form a lean, mean, killing, slash supporting, slash tanking, slash booning machine. <laughs> now, <laughs> there booning is a... machine. I <laughs> like booning machine. <laughs> yeah. Now, there is a copious amount of builds to choose from and much to experiment with. So, what build should you go with? Well, it's really not what single build you should go with because, honestly, I'm a firm believer that there is not a single, like, end-all build for everything. You should have especially if you have like a single character that you main with, you should have multiple builds and armor sets for that character. But the first question that you need to ask yourself is, what am I wanting to do? Now this seems like a very basic question, but this is actually a very important first question to ask yourself because there are many different competitive activities to do in Guild Wars 2 that require very different styles of play. Now this is something that, even though this is a World v. World and PvP segment, this definitely applies to PvE as well. Because I know there's like this Zerker meta, okay, when you go into dungeons or when you're doing different events. Typically people prefer, or like elitist groups, prefer Zerker simply because it's the fastest DPS. And I know that there are some players that that's not really their, their thing and they like Condi. But something that you need to consider is Condi is fine for killing creatures, but if you're going into a dungeon that you know there are a lot of structures that you need to damage, I'm thinking like Sorrow's Embrace Path 1, where you have to destroy all the barriers on your way to mm -hmm. uh, that first like boss fight, that's a situation where your build may hinder your team if they're trying to get through fast. So this, <laughs> this is something that will even apply to PvE players. Now, a... Structured PvP match is totally different from running in a Zerg, which is completely different from roaming. In order to be successful at whatever you want to do in-game, I highly recommend investing time to research a good build for what you want to do. Almost all builds have a few basic elements in common, though. The first one is damage. All builds are going to be doing damage. There's, there's not a uh, solely dedicated healer in Guild Wars or solely dedicated support class. You're going to be doing some sort of damage, whether that's burst damage, meaning you do a whole lot of damage, you wait a little bit, do a whole lot of damage more later. You do Condi, mm -hmm. or you do a steady DPS, or damage per second. Another aspect that all builds are pretty much going to have in common is a stability or stun break. This is something that kind of gets you out of trouble. Even if you're a PvE player, you should have some sort of stun breaker. That way, if you are in Silver Waste and you see this giant Terragriff coming at you and you have 3 HP left, you're going to want to throw your stability or invulnerability on. That way you don't get mowed down. And then the third thing that all builds have in common is healing, some sort of sustain, and a Condi clear. 
this can come in several different ways. It can be an actual a utility that you equip. It could be a trait that activates passively when like your health drops below a certain threshold. But pretty much all builds are going to have some sort of sustain and connie clear. All all builds have to have a healing. Like you, you can't get around that. You can't just be like, I'm never going to heal. You you, you have to <laughs> well, heal. No, you can. You can totally be like that. You just will die a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so traits. Traits is a very... For me, when I first started the game, I saw traits and I was like, what the crap do I do with this page? It was just a whole (laughs) lot to figure out. I was like, there are Roman numerals and names and there are these passive traits. What on earth is going on? Okay, so I'm going to try to debunkify traits for you guys a little bit. So a good first place to start, I know I feel like a, a broken record, like I'm constantly saying the same thing, like go to meta battle because it's a really good first step to see how traits work when they have a finished goal in mind. You can see, oh, they use this with this and that will make this occur. And it kind of opens it up to you. I, even like I put a lot of hours into the game, but I still learn new things every week about the different characters and builds that I play just because I spend some time out of game looking things up. And I think that's a very important thing for everyone to do. Even PBE players, I think you should always be striving to improve your play. Mm -hmm. So meta battle is a very good place to start because they will explain what exactly you need to do to best utilize that build. For example, like the Dagger Dagger Ellie that's really popular in PvP right now, it goes through and explains how to use your fields and then blast those fields. That way you are stacking might and healing yourself by blasting water fields while you're fighting. So as the fight goes on longer, you're actually getting stronger and more likely to win the fight. And it's really just a neat thing to see how these builds can be developed. So what I want you to do is just when you go to design your build or choose a build, So I want you to take a step back and think what you want to do with this build. Do you want to be tankier and do a little bit of damage? Or do you want to be burst damage? And then try to find traits that are in line with that. So along with your traits, you have your armor sets and then sigils and infusions and then trinkets you can put with them. So to accompany your armor and weapons, there are runes and sigils to attach to them to further empower your build. Runes go in armor and aqua breathers, and sigils are applied to weapons. Superior runes are going to give your armor the biggest bonus. The bonuses get greater for the more runes of the same type that you apply. For example, six runes of the ogre are going to give you 5% damage bonus, or 4%, sorry, whereas five runes of the ogre will not. And this is where the stats on your armor come into play as well. This is where people like mention Zerker or Knights or Soldiers or Sinister is becoming more popular. This is where a lot of your damage and stat power is going to come from, is the armor. The different armor stats, they're going to give you a bulk of, like, your damage and stuff like that. And those are to be coupled with, like, the trinkets, like the rings, the amulet, the back piece, and then the accessories that you have. It's ideal to kind of go with one set across the board, although mixing and matching isn't always bad. For example, a lot of roaming builds, like, have you go Zerker armor? With mostly mm-hmm. Zerker trinkets and stuff. However, they'll have you have like one soldier's piece in there for a little bit more of a cushion. Mm-hmm. Now, what I recommend, this is for like roamers and PVEers as well. There's this like Zerker meta that's really popular and a lot of people are kind of turned off by it because it can be kind of an elitist click and it really doesn't have to be that way. A good place to start if you're kind of wanting to get into this Zerker meta is start with soldier stats. That's power, vitality, and toughness, because that's going to give you really high power stats, but you have a lot of room for error or mistakes to be made with vitality and toughness. And what you want to do is, when you're working with this build, when you fight mobs or when you're fighting people, try to take as little damage as possible, like stagger blinds, stagger CCs, and try to make it so that you never get damage. And this is like a really good practice because if you screw up while you do this and you have soldier's gear on, well, you have room for mistakes. If you screw up and you have Zerker gear on, well, you don't really have a whole lot of room for mistakes. So this is like, soldiers is a really good start. And as you get better, transition into Berserker gear. This is like really good for like thieves and I, I guess any class can benefit from it. But I've seen a lot of thieves do it as well as warriors and guardians for roaming. Hmm. Now, 
PvP runes work differently. This is for people that are wanting to get into PvP. When you go into Heart of the Mists, the PvP lobby, uh, some people get a little confused because it's not set up the way they have their build set up. It's not like going into World v. World where what you have in Tyria is like what you have in the Mists. The PvP setup it's within the PvP menu. If you look at the top center of your screen, you have this little PvP build option. You'll get to choose a single rune and a single amulet. And that is what's going to give you all your stat bonuses. If you look at those amulets, they are like... they can, Some of them give you like 900 power or something like that. Like you're not going to have a single item in the game that gives you that much outside of the PvP environment. So that's like when it says like Zerker's amulet, that's essentially like giving your character like an entire Zerker stat setup or mm-hmm. zerker gear now the question of i have exotic gear should i push for ascended i actually do not recommend ascended gear unless you have picked a build that you know you're going to be using a lot and even if you decide to go with another build at some other time you will go back to that build simply because ascended is a huge resource sink lots of time lots of gold and it, it can be stressful for a lot of people. And really, it doesn't give you a a huge stat bonus. I find different numbers from different sources. I've seen 5 to 8% of an increase, which 8% is pretty significant. That's almost 10, and that's, that's a pretty big advantage. But 5% is pretty small. At least I think one could argue that point with me. But I think exotic is totally fine to start off with and roam with. And if you look at like a lot of these like very good streamers that like use multiple builds and multiple classes, they just have like primarily exotic gear. Mm-hmm. You can be very successful with that. I actually dueled someone this past week and they beat me. This was in World v. World. They beat me and uh, they saw that I had a legendary weapon and they're like, did, do you have all ascended gear? And I, I pinged my gear. I, I did have ascended. And he he started like, rejoicing he's like oh i beat you and you have ascended i only have exotic i responded i was just like hey man like that's really good like the stats don't mean too much like ascended gear on a certain build just may not be able to beat exotic on another and so i complimented his playing i was like it's it's more about your ability to play rather than the stat like the gear is mm-hmm. not going to make you a better player it's your skill yeah And that's something in the next segment, I'm going to be talking about some combat mechanics, like using line of sight and mobility to your advantage. So we'll be talking about that later. But just know that like, if you go and fight someone and you have ascended gear, that's not an automatic win for you. Good to know. So the challenge, last week I challenged people to roam. And I heard you talking about this earlier. You both roamed? I did. Well, not this week. Last week I did. Remember I did it on reset night. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm so sorry. You me- you mentioned this last week with Hunter. I should have told people Friday night is a terrible, terrible night to roam <laughs> because that is reset night where the new matchups happen. Worldly World is a clean slate and there are just Zergs everywhere. Like, it's just not a good night for roamers. You will get chewed up, spit out and digested again. Like, it's just it's horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> So I'm so sorry. Don't roam on reset night unless you're cruising for a bruising. But uh, roam, yes. <laughs> but Celeste, how was your roaming experience? Mm, not great. Not, not great. <laughs> when I was doing it by myself, it was pretty terrible. I got killed a lot. Mm. <laughs> um, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you because it happened to me too. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of had... Tough Love Critic showed me around because I didn't know that he was on Henge. So we ran around on uh, a, a borderland for a little bit and just kind of roamed. And he was explaining, like, okay, this is kind of like where you would want to go and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And that helped a lot. So after that, when I was roaming, I decided to go ahead and switch to another character because it was better geared. It went better, but still not exactly my cup of tea. I still ended up. With, like, a little group of four or five running Havoc. (laughs) So (laughs) it just kind of happened that way. That's actually what happened to me as well. I got started, I tried roaming, but eventually just kind of, like, clustered in with some other people. Yeah. For for safety. (laughs) That That too. That tends to happen. Um, If there's, like, several roamers on a map, it's... 
I forget there's some sort of law of like gravitation where people just like come together, but I, I think that happens a lot. I actually did my own challenge this week, and my two roamers that I use are NG and Guardian. And I thought, you know, I, I should really do my own challenge, branch out, and e either try new builds on these or use classes that I don't normally roam with. And I did both of those things. I did a different build on my NG, which went horribly at first, but I stuck with it. And um, it turns out, like, I love this build. I, I switched to Static Discharge, and I just had a blast with it. Then I tried Thief roaming. I've had a thief for like six months, but have like never really done much with it. And at first it was horrible, but once I understood that I need to play like a glass cannon without a, a cushion to fall on, mm. that really cleaned up my playing and I had a lot of fun doing that. Carbon just asked, Ultra, your opinion, best solo roam class? Well, it depends on what your goal is. If your goal is to flip camps, it's thief by far. You have the best mobility, you have the best ability to get away from people that are chasing you, and you can just you can wipe a camp so fast. Like, that's one of the builds that I tried out on my Thief this week. I went to Meta Battle and looked at the uh, Thief Solo Camp Flipper build. Even as a Thief noob, I was able to flip a camp in about 30 seconds. Like, cleaning up the mobs, and then I was in the cap circle right as it, it showed that it was under attack on the map. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I think Thief, by far, for only flipping camps and guard post, is the best right now. Now, if you're looking for fights... That's any class, anything that you feel comfortable with, because any class is capable of flipping camps quickly, and any class is capable of fighting an another class. It's really just your personal preference. I think warriors are very strong because of their mobility, like the hammer greatsword combo is really strong right now. That's pretty much what I have the most trouble with, is warriors and thieves, and the occasional mesmer. <laughs> Elementalist. Yeah, all the classes are good. <laughs> Probably not against me, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, so last week we had a game, and the game was come up with a cheesy tourist advertising slogan for one of the maps. And I really love the responses that we got. These are, oh, yeah. these are really good. Uh, sure. We got a couple emails from M is for Awesome, who is actually in the chat room. And she said, Holbrack, proud to be a Holbrack girl. And Frost Gorge Sound, future home of the Kodan Memorial Park, which is, I kind of <laughs> love that one. <laughs> yeah. Silver Waste, take whatever nice people have to give. That's actually more a quote for Drewbert. <laughs> for Drewbert. And The Grove, Big Lie Country, <laughs> which I also thought was awesome. <laughs> that was pretty nice. <laughs> From Romo on Twitter, he said, Timberline Falls, for all your wood needs, you'll find yourself yelling timber in no time. Axes not included. <laughs> that sounds more like a product commercial. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was it good. Works. That was good. <laughs> and from Particle Shift, greetings, glorious podcasting trio. In response to Ultra's game this week, I have a few postcards from my travels. Malcor's Leap. Where the past comes to life. It's pretty good. This one, this one's my favorite. South Sun Cove, come for the beaches, stay for the seafood. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then Fireheart Rise, purity through fire. Yes. <laughs> and he put his postcards on Tumblr. Yes. yes. And they are, and they are on, on the, the video, video as, as, well. as well. Artful also posted on Twitter. He said, Mount's Maelstrom confirmed. <laughs> <It's> funny. <laughs> People went kind of crazy awesome with these this week. <laughs> or two weeks. Yeah. yeah. We also got an email from Jawa with quite a few, actually. Queensdale, killing centaurs since Divinity's Coast. <laughs> Metrica Province, the only province that uses the metric system. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like something the Azura would say. <laughs> Pretty yeah. much, yeah. <laughs> Brisbane Wildlands. It's been a while. Fort Koga for a visit. It's been a while. Like, Brisbane Wildlands? Been a while? It kind of sounds that way. And Fort Koga for a visit? Come over for a visit? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Nah, eh? It works. Plains of Ashford. We've got chars and zerg trains, too. Plains, <laughs> trains, and chars? <laughs> <laughs> 
the trains are all at Ultra's house. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Choo choo. <laughs> Fireheart rise. Urge to Fireheart rising. <laughs> Lion's arch. We're still here. <laughs> and we're still building. Yes. <laughs> Even without hammers. <laughs> I don't know if you, any of you have seen the Dini Kong video. It's uh, it With says your tax, hammering? yeah, your tax dollars hard at work, and it just shows the Lions Arch NPCs just hammering <laughs> with no progress. Yeah. Oh. And then uh, Straits of Devastation, Straits of Devastation, Straits. You know, like Pixie's Wave of Mutilation. I'm glad it you, works. I'm glad you read that one because I don't know that song. <laughs> That's why I put a link to a YouTube of it. Oh, that's what that link's for? Okay. <laughs> the Grove. Organic home style with pulp. Fortified with dream. Not from concentrate. And uh, there's one that I coined that has been on Bog Otter's Guild Missions videos. It's... I like it you put potentially not safe for work. It's totally not safe for work. So, uh... We're just gonna have a link to it. Mm-hmm. Shall I move on to the game for this week? Yes. Yeah, what's the game now? Okay, the game for this week, or this next bye week or two weeks. So you are with the members of Destiny's Edge at a bar on karaoke night. Pick a member to get up and sing a song, and what song did they pick to belt out? I love that. Hmm. I just have this like mental image of sitting at a bar between Ritlock, uh, Zoja, Air, and the others, and just... Ritlock getting up and singing Hungry Like the Wolf. Ah, very good. Oh, well, Mesmer is Time Warp. Logan would be that song. And so I good. run, I run so <laughs> far away. I, don't know flock, the I ran by a flock of seagulls. Oh, okay. You know, you know what, community? This game is just for us this week. You guys just take a break. <laughs> We're going to do it all right now. <laughs> In fact, I just said profession. I didn't even do a member of Destiny's Edge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're changing the game. <laughs> On a whim. We're fickle yeah. that way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the game is different. No game for you. <laughs> no. Everyone's allowed. Yes. Yeah. There's more than those songs. Definitely. Um, <laughs> Rome was still going on with I ran. <laughs> Couldn't get away. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Did I do the challenge for this week? Like, did I say the new challenge? The last challenge we had was to roam, and the challenge for the next two weeks is to... Is to try a new build. Um, take the build that you are comfortable with and just put it on the back burner for a while and either make a new one or go to Meta Battle or some other build catalog site and take mm -hmm. an existing one and make it your own. Put your own spin on it or just use it as it is. But either way, try a new build. Like if you roam or PvP and you do DPS builds or burst builds, try a Cotney build and vice versa. Or if you're a PvE player, take the build that you play right now and do something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, write down your current build first, though. Or take a screenshot of it so you don't forget it. Because I never, I, I'm so used to taking screen caps on my Mac. I can't remember how to do it on a PC, so I just take a picture of my screen with my phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's just print screen. It's not that. But I don't work. know where it goes. <laughs> it goes to the wherever you have it set to go to. Your I documents don't know folder, where that is. You don't know where documents go? No. Okay, I can't help you there. <laughs> the only thing I do on my PC is the show and Guild Wars Play. 2. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Doc's name's Well, that's for Guild Wars 2 screenshot. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I, know, I know where those are. <laughs> well, if you hit print screen, that's where it goes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just so you know. Just so we know. All right. I wonder if I should throw that in as, like, a tip under Asking Azura. <laughs> that's from... <laughs> <laughs> this is Lolo's white bow. Yeah, I have that <laughs> feeling. <laughs> oh... <laughs> and Azura. For 
Ask in Azura this week, we had a question from Rune Lockhart, and he said, I'm confused about hero points. I just spent 1,200 skill points. Should I have done that? Are they in use under the new hero point system? Thanks. So you and everyone else, Rune, I'm still sitting on my scrolls trying to decide what I should do with them. And I did do some uh, googling. And I did find an interview over at Massively Overpowered. There will be a link to that in the show notes. And John Peters said there, if you already have scrolls of knowledge and a bunch of existing skill points, you will end up with a lot of crafting material that converts into a new currency that will be used in the Mystic Forge. We will be talking more about how that works and how you acquire that currency in the future. So until I hear anything else, I'm kind of sitting on it. Yeah, and... Based on the statement there, it really doesn't matter if you consume them or not, because if they're extra leftover skill points, they're still going to be converted. I think it's more, do you decide to consume them, the scrolls on characters, to get up to a certain point so that they have all what they need to get stuff unlocked? Yeah. What I decided to do is I'm going to go ahead and spend them on the 80s that don't have all of their skills yet. Mm-hmm. And I'm just unlocking skills. Yeah, that's what I I was trying to decide, though, if I wanted to do that or save those for doing hero points organically with those characters or like, it's more just, you know, I think it's, you know, either decision you decide to make is probably going to be safe. I don't think that they're going to do anything to upset people, to be perfectly honest. No, we'll probably be given plenty of notification so people oh, can yeah. make decisions. But yeah, I, I think if you spent them all. Like, or consume them all, I think you're fine. Eat them or save them, it doesn't really matter. At this point, no. Carbon saying, if you have a character at 80, you'll need a minimum of 60 skill slash hero challenges done on the map to unlock everything. I thought it was slightly more than that, but not much. I thought it was like 63 or something. I'm pretty sure they said 560. <laughs> just messing. You're just trolling. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave. <laughs> We uh, we stole some tips for asking Azura. Uh, tips, not ours, for jumping puzzles. And Irish Dog has, continuing on Guild Wars 2 Basics videos, has one for jumping puzzles. And there's some really good tips in there for, like, jumping puzzle tours, essentially, if you want to do group some together and do those. And he talks about how once you get used to doing certain ones and get better at them and kind of ramp up your speed with them, it will improve your ability in almost in any jumping puzzle. And it's and it's true. Like, and I remember I had done that at one point, some of the more kind of basic jumping puzzles, like Demon Grub Pits in mm-hmm. uh, Queensdale. I just challenged myself to do that as fast as I could. And if I fell, it wasn't a huge deal because it's not deathly. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's really good. Although the first person stuff made me nauseous. <laughs> So I don't know if that's a good tip. <laughs> I've actually run through the one that he switched into first person for uh, the Trolls End. Mm-hmm. I've done that one in first person. It's actually easier that way. It made me nauseous. And watching the video made me nauseous. So I, apparently first person may, and actual playing the game, not a good thing for me. Hmm. All right then. Oh yeah, and uh, Irish Dog is also saying Specs Lab is one of the best to test your speed. 100% agree there. Yeah, and and it, it's really nice because you get the uh, checkpoints. So if you do fall, you can start from a checkpoint. You don't have to do it right from the beginning. Mm-hmm. So I I love that one. There was a lot of really solid stuff that was shared in this, mm-hmm. and I had never heard of mini porting, and it seems a little bit cheaty. <laughs> I'll be honest, but I'm totally gonna try it. Shh. <laughs> still seems pretty cheap. So some tips that are also not ours for PvP. Over on Academy Gaming by Omnipotent Toaster. (laughs) First time reading that name. (laughs) Uh, It's tips for new players, the five basic roles. And he or she points out the five roles that most people end up falling into when they're playing a match. And you've got the near point defender, the team fight support, team fight damage, the roamer, and the far point attacker. 
And I find that I tend to fall into all of these roles at any given time during a match, but I rotate through them pretty fluidly, so I never really thought of them as being a role. But I guess if you were to stick to one main objective through each match, you could Mm -hmm. call it that. Yeah, I've, I've never known anyone who's really done that. I think that these are all solid. I think this is like a very good way to break this down. But this, these tips, this is, this seems like an ideal, like five man team, like Mm prearranged. This isn't really something that I think people understand going in solo queue because oftentimes in solo queue, like you just, what what I mean by solo queue is you're queuing alone into an arena match. A lot of times people just want to play it safe and go for home and mid or near and mid. They just want two points, and so a lot of times you'll get chastised for going far. I don't think a lot of people understand if you say, well, I'm I'm the far point attacker on our team. Like, they, they may not fully understand that. So just just a heads up. Not I'm not saying, like, this is a, a bad thing to read. No, this is an excellent thing to read, especially if you're you're, mm-hmm. like, a small group looking to formulate a team strategy. I think this is great, but I, I just don't know if it would work completely for solo queue. Like, if you communicate with your team before the match starts and just explain what you're going to be trying to do, then yes. Mm -hmm. But make sure that you communicate that with your team because you don't want to have five far point pushers. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. And that's uh, that's something I do. Not all all pugs are chatty, but sometimes it's good when Mm -hmm. they'll say what their plans are, and that's always good. Yeah. It's it's really nice, too, when you have people that react to what you're going to do. Like, I, my tip the other week was to say hi and then introduce, like, what build and stuff you're going to do. Um, because a lot of times if I say, like, oh, I'm, like, a bunker guardian, someone will be like, oh, let me switch to something more DPS real quick. That way we don't have too much just, you know, bunk. Okay. But, yeah, I like hmm. this tips thing. Oh, I saw a link to it on Reddit. And I poked about the site. They have some really nice tips in there, too. Like, it's a well-laid-out site. And it looks to be new-ish, this Academy Gaming net. So, Mm -hmm. pretty cool. Tales of Tyria. We actually have a few things for Tales of Tyria, one of which we just found during the recording of the show. (laughs) But first up, we were going to show some fan art of a char. And you don't really see an awful lot of char fan art. And I just thought this was really well done. The painting style on it was quite... And the expression on the face. I imagine char would be hard to do. It's quite nice. Mm-hmm. I love the hair. And I like that uh, she's wearing the... Uh, which outfit is that? The mesmery one with the dragons going up and down it. Yeah. It's the one that's Canthan. But yeah, this is beautiful. I love it. It's quite nice. Mm-hmm. Ancestral. And now on to the... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even looking at it and I'm already laughing. To the best post ever. <laughs> Guys, have you heard of Vandalize? <laughs> I haven't. You haven't heard of vandalize? Like the act of Van- vandalization? No, no, no. Vandal <laughs> eyes. What is this? This is where you take googly eyes and put them on things, and it makes everything amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the snort is real. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I think I like this I-10 one best, actually. Well, uh, I think, well, uh, yeah, this I-10 is pretty awesome. <laughs> They're all so good. They're all so good. <laughs> Googly eyes make everything better. Googly yeah. eyes make everything better. <laughs> I was I wasn't even looking at this anymore and I was like just I don't know what I was doing. I was just in in the house doing something and I thought about these and I started laughing again. 
Oh, you know, I, I had a student do this to my iPad last week. I totally <laughs> forgot about this. She had, like, googly eyes and was sticking on things throughout the school. I came back into my classroom. Apparently, I left my class door unlocked. And she had put these googly eyes on my iPad case. <laughs> so you were vandalized. I was vandalized. No. Oh, my goodness. Uh. <laughs> oh. And then, oh, then Celeste posted the link for Vandal Eyes, so uh, we should probably post that in chat. But there was one in that one, the red pepper. Oh, wow. (laughs) Hit your mag, dash my cookies. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, wow. The googly-eyed elder dragons or their minions or lieutenants are just, they kill me. That's, that is the best. Moving on. The struggle is real, people. The designs has a post on Tumblr. The Silver Waste and me, we have a special relationship. <laughs> and, yeah. Eating a sandwich. Reading a book. <laughs> Instead of heal, it should say rub. <laughs> yeah, it should be. It's pretty awesome. Are you still falling? Yes, yes, I am. That's pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Now, for some special kind of justice. Justice! <laughs> there was a guy who was hacking and being terrible. He finally got caught with video evidence, and Chris clearly decided to, uh, you know, be awesome. And he took video <laughs> of <laughs> taking off all the gear, making this guy run off. Uh, a ledge and dying and then deleting his character and then deleting the other character on his account and you know basically being awesome he says oh yeah he's also banned (laughs) this is like oh yeah systematically delete each of the hackers characters and ban them so to hear guild wars 2 players tell it a single player has been bending the rules or snapping them over their knee Clean and two, really, to dominate the game's large-scale world versus world PvP for three weeks. Mm -hmm. Apparently, this player could deal absurd damage, teleport, and survive nigh-impossible situations, and their opponents could only grind their teeth and watch. Day in and day out, players reported, the hacker would warp into precious keeps and capture structures, all the while dispatching whoever dared get in their way. It was, to put it plainly, some old bull roar. I almost said the actual thing. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Plenty of bovine excrement. Yes. I love that he recorded the footage of it. Although apparently there's some people who think that it was amateurish of Arena Net or Chris to do this, but I don't know. It was Shades of Doom from Guild Wars One and I'm totally I'm totally down with it. I think it's okay. It's I can see both sides. Like, yes, they're definitely running this guy up a flagpole and making an example out of him, but like what he was doing like that's just that's horrible like mm-hmm. so like if i was on you know the receiving end of his um hacking like i i would be pretty comforted by watching this video <laughs> <laughs> i think that was kind of the point is for him yeah. to understand and be like you know guys i get it i've inflicted as much pain as possible yeah i want to watch the video that players posted i watched it it was like uh, painful to watch this guy. Like that would just infuriate me. It was it was crazy hacks, basically. So yeah, and then there's video of the hacker's character leaping naked to his doom. Obviously, he didn't listen to the podcast about etiquette. Yes, very much so. Knew about what happens to hackers and botters in Guild Wars One. There's precedence. <laughs> so yeah, I saw that on uh, Facebook actually. What <laughs> during? I may have checked my phone really quickly during the show and found that. <laughs> I'd seen it earlier today, but I had kind of forgotten about it, I guess. Mm. I didn't think to add it to the show, but yeah. So we have one more thing. It's not specifically related to Guild Wars 2, but there is a game on Steam called Fant- Dragon Fantasy, the Volumes of Wisteria. And if so if you're interested in trying out a new game... It, this has been put out by a developer that sponsored Chris and Harry's trip to PAX East this past year. So you should check it out and maybe you will like it. Yeah, watch a video and see if it's for you. Mm-hmm. 
So if you have a community event that you would like for us to share, please send us an email. We'd be happy to do, get it all over the place as much <laughs> as we can. <laughs> I'm glad I get, broke you. <laughs> we will get it all over the place. Oh, this event is all over the place. Now I gotta clean it up. <laughs> Pretty much. And if you've got a burning question for our Ask an Azura segment, let us know. Or I will have to beg for questions on Twitter an hour before the show. And so now let's go ahead and talk about our sponsor. If you are in dire need of audiobooks, or just, you know, you enjoy books with sound, you can go to audibletrial.com slash Reporter and you'll get a free audiobook. I actually like that the way it's written here, it just says book now with sound. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just, just one book. <laughs> And if you use the coupon code MMOreporter at doghousesystems.com, you will get an additional 120 gig SSD drive for free on your next build and or possibly a super star destroyer. Potentially. Or a star studded diaper. Or a star studded diaper. Yep. So if you're in love with the show or the network, consider becoming a patron on our Patreon page. I know we only really talk about it like at the end of the show, but seriously, Patreon is awesome and the people that contribute there are a special kind of awesome and we really appreciate them. And so if you want to help us out, you want to help to keep the network going, to help us to do awesome stuff, you should definitely check it out. Patreon.com slash Reporter. It helps. So, Alona, if people want to get into contact with us to share their best vandalide boss, maybe, <gasps> or what song they would sing at karaoke with the Iconics or Biconics. Can we have that as the game after this one? Well, I just said it, so I don't know. <laughs> anyway. We can have two games. Since we kind of did this one already. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> no game for you. So, <laughs> no, no game for you. So our contact info. You can email us at gwreporter at mmoreporter.com. Our Twitter is at gwreporter. Our website is guildwarsreporter.com. Voicemail is 616-666-6778. Or you can use the widget on the right-hand side of the website. Our YouTube channel is MMO Reporter Network, and remember to like our videos and subscribe to the GW Reporter playlist, and while you're there, poke about, watch other shows, whatevs. Yep. Facebook is GW Reporter, Tumblr is gwreporter.tumblr.com, and you can visit us on Twitter. I am at one big pear, as in the fruit. And I am at Saluki, or you can find us in-game where I am Saluki.5046. And I'm one big pair dot one two four nine. And I am Ultra Town dot five six eight three. <laughs> Won't you take me to Ultra Town? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I may have put that in there because I could not help myself. Yes, in the Won't show notes before to... it says uh, <laughs> my tag it, or my gamer again. Oh, train. <laughs> Is that the new uh, train. substitution for? Swearing? Words? Oh, train. <laughs> oh, train. Yeah. That and turtle. Turtle. <laughs> yeah, turtle. Carbon wants to go to Ultra Town. Won't you take me to Ultra Town? <laughs> but yeah, in the show notes before my uh, account name, she put, won't you take me to and it's <laughs> Ultra Town. Is that train going to Ultra Town? <laughs> <laughs> the train. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Destination going, it's Ultra going Town. Through. It's going through. <laughs> so thank you, Ultra and Alona, for spending time with me. Yeah, it's fun. It is fun, isn't it? Yeah. I like it. And thank you to our chat room, despite <laughs> your naughty behavior this evening. Tee <laughs> I love you anyways. Yeah. So thank you for downloading the show. We hope that you enjoyed it. We hope that you come back again next week. May the 6th watch over you, and we hope to see you in game.
So. All right. Uh, I guess we can go ahead and get started on the show if uh, we've decided that everybody's a decent volume. Aside from chat room, so quiet. Silent like the grave. Into which I will throw them. <laughs> and yes, there was gesturing for that. <laughs> okay. like, like, kind of grabby hands out in the air. Pretty oh. much. I just cranked my elbow on the wall. Don't ah. do that. Don't. And then I just about yanked out my headset. There we go. Don't do that. Specializations. <laughs> Sorry, just a second. Mm-hmm. Brief interlude. Do, 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 do. Okay, I got a puppy that's come into the room. No, you, you have to take her. <laughs> just a second. Sorry, everyone. I have to kick a dog out of the room. No worries. Out you go. Fun fact, there was many a time when I had a child asleep in my lap and doing the show. <laughs> what's I'm like, what's, all of a sudden Cal comes into the room and he grabs his phone and leaves the dog in here. <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> it's like, hey, you forgot something. <laughs> Shuck. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and surviving the miss, but... Yeah, I'll talk about that experience down there because no, <laughs> because it fits there, because that's where it's supposed to go. Yeah, and that all of that was just an insane amount of out of context good stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> good times. Yeah, it is best to listen live because we kick dogs, apparently. <laughs> And that is enjoyable for people to hear. (laughs) We don't actually kick dogs. We don't. So you guys know. (laughs) We gently ask them to leave the room. (laughs) That's what we do. (laughs) Still, (laughs) what swatting a turtle looks like. (laughs) You just like flick the shell. I don't know. (laughs) It's like, what can a turtle do that would warrant being, like, swatted, though? Because they just kind of hang out, generally speaking. (laughs) Generally, yeah. (laughs) Anyway, so, yay. Oh, oh, you did, you split up the show! Yes, I did. (sighs) It's like you've done this before. Sometimes. It's only 148. (laughs) I think, you know, probably, like, by 150, I can say that I'm kind of experienced. (sighs) Ah. reading chat now don't <laughs> don't encourage them <laughs> launch a wave of wave of temporal energy energy bleh, energy it does for, for 200 gems is it two- and then did i type 200 you typed 200 are you wrong 600 <laughs> i'm for 600 gems i was like wow 200 gems i'm totally going buying that right now oh wait no it's 600 train Train. (laughs) (laughs) courtesy of csx intermodal (laughs) give us money we'll just wait for that they really like to lay on the horn at night they really do yeah they're very enthusiastic right now yeah i can just i can just picture some super happy train conductor just in there like listen to my train (laughs) hit your dog slap your turtles Okay, I lost my spot. Where was I talking about? So I'm gonna try to do de- I'm gonna try to debunkify. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm gonna try to debunk. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> take a minute and breathe. It helps. I do this to Celeste all the time, and she does because like you're getting ready to talk again, and then she starts like laughing. Yeah, and you're like. Yeah. Anymore? Yeah, my dog farted too, and it's just really hard to like <laughs> do anything right right now. Kick him out of the room. I can't. She'll just come back. <laughs> so let's get a hold of yourself. It's just a dog fart. It's just funny. It's like the train, <laughs> the dog fart, not being able to speak all at once. You know? Yeah. From is the armor. Um. Oh my gosh. I'm so. I'm so sorry. <laughs> It's just not a good night to be having a quiet environment in your house. No, I guess not. And the turtle's giving me sass. It's just a nightmare. <laughs> how, how 
how exactly is he giving sass? I'm just curious. She just, she gets up on the side of her tank and just stares at me. And when I look at her, she just cocks her head a certain way. And I know she's just thinking about how she can bite me next time I need to put my hand in there. <laughs> on. She's mad at me. I had to, I had to clean off her shell last night and she just, she's still pissed off at me, I think. Oh, sorry. She's still upset with me. <laughs> I thought they liked that, like if you rub them with a toothbrush on their tummy. Yeah, most turtles do, but I'm beginning to realize that this turtle, like, I, I don't think she was born on Earth. I think she came from the depths of hell or something. She's <laughs> savage. And apparently carnivorous if she wants to bite you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Carbon-based. Om nom nom. <laughs> turtle yes. sass. Okay, I got a jingle for Surviving the Mist. I think it'll work. <laughs> Welcome to Surviving the Mist, where you learn how to beat your enemies and make them pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like the little yeah at the end. <laughs> Copyright Ultra Town 5683. Won't you take me to Ultra Town? Thanks for watching the video, everybody. Don't forget to check out all the other podcasts at MMOReporter.com or by clicking on any of the links here. And please check out our Patreon campaign at Patreon.com slash MMOReporter. Thanks, everyone, and see you in game.